Opportunities in the sciences did not always guarantee a place at the table for women and people of color. Despite existing cultures, where proving your abilities was an open norm, a resilient culture of excellence manifested itself, opening doors for many in industry, research, and education. Women and minorities have historically been strong contributors, carving opportunities in academia for many behind them. In January 2016, black computer science professionals gathered in Washington, D.C. for a workshop to discuss and collaborate over race and gender in the computing sciences as it relates to black women. The idea was to formulate strategies, network, and plan for an evolving future in a very progressive industry which did not always embrace them. In this presentation, we talked with several participants who shared their personal and unscripted testimonies about the business of computing and intersectionality, and now their inspiring words. Black women are doing some amazing things in computer science and in computing more broadly, and it's really important for um, us as black women to be talking about the things that we're doing. Part of what this convening is for is to begin to organize ourselves, um, to organize our message, to really set an agenda for the kind of impact we want to have and to position ourselves to be able to really make that impact. So I think this meeting, uh, it's an inaugural meeting, it's really the first of its kind for computing. I think it's very critical, it's very important, and it's really going to help shape the future of how not only women, in, black women in computing um, are positioned, but on how we are viewed and how we are able to take seats at a, num a num number of different kinds of tables. Computer science actually comes from math. It actually came from the idea that the first machine, and in fact, they would say the first computer was a calculator. It just had not been realized. And what few people know, as part of the development of the first machine, was that Ada Lovelace, who was a, obviously a woman, was part of that development effort with Charles Babbage. But how many women hear about that here and now? So one of the things I talk about in my classroom is that the fact that women have always been present in this field, it just has not been made salient or highlighted or emphasized. It's really sad. Some of the first uh, core programmers in terms of major computational power, talking about the ENIAC, were a, a group of women. A group of women. That machine was about the size of a football field, but there were women who programmed that machine. N not men, a core group of women. How many people know that? When you begin to understand what computer science was at the very beginning, even in its, in its origin, it was never just about programming. I think over time, that's what people associate with it because that's what people identify as being a career option. But again, it's so much more than that. It's the process of really thinking through problems, breaking them down, and solving them, and putting it back together for a solution. So by the time I left the company, people were saying, oh, one of the good people are leaving us, and we're gonna need to replace that person. And so I think, like I said before, at one point I thought I was representing the whole race. So therefore, by my behavior and my actions and my work ethic, I was able to change opinions of everyone. Um, one of the first things I noticed is we had to work together, for example, in groups. So at the end of the first day of every class, you know, we would form the groups. And it never failed that my classmates would essentially look at me up and down and say, no, we don't want you in our group, including the women. Uh, so, so that was a challenge. And I addressed it uh, by interacting and with the foreign students. Many of them were experiencing the same thing. Uh, and they turned out to be, in many instances, the smartest in the class. So I ended up in the best groups. So, so even though I had those types of challenges, I also had those types of solutions. I, I've had people who have said to me, you know, you're in the wrong place. Why are you here? Uh, we don't think you belong here, but we'll take your external fellowship money. Um, at the time, though, I knew that that was their opinion. It was not based on fact or truth. I knew who I was. I knew this is what God made me to be. I enjoy what I'm doing. I really enjoy it immensely. And uh, I was not going to let a few misinformed people prevent me from having a good time and enjoying my work. 
My mother was an administrative assistant for um, the Jackson County Prosecutor's Office in Kansas City, Missouri. But basically, she did mainly all of the technological stuff within that department, but she was still like a secretary because, you know, that's what they consider administrative secretaries. And so I really looked at the stuff that she did and, and said, you know, I need to get into technology and I need to get into that area. And then once I finally got into college, it was more um, a mentor from the people at Environmental Protection Agency, Brenda Groskinski, which was really instrumental for me in understanding what human-computer interaction and human-centered computing is. So that yesterday is we need to own our own voice and have our own voice. So last night we purchased the blackwomeninkomputing.org uh, domain. I am constantly doubting myself. You know, a lot of people call it the imposter syndrome, and it's comforting to know that people that even I think, you know, have arrived or are successful or, you know, are kind of the epitome of what, you know, a computer scientist is, still go to work every day and, you know, have this same, um, you know, feelings of doubt, second guessing themselves just based, you know, based on what they know other people are thinking. So that's something that, you know, internally I have to deal with and confront on a daily basis. Um, with that said, I do have, you know, my past experience, past successes to kind of remind, and, and a, a very strong network of women in computing that constantly remind me, you know, no, you know what you're doing. Look at, you know, look at what you've done. Look at your, your um, accomplishments in this field. Look what you've contributed. So having that support, having that, you know, mirror, so to speak, to keep reminding me, I belong here. I, I belong, I'm supposed to have a seat at the table. I can contribute is um, very beneficial and um, in making sure that I keep pushing forward, that I keep, you know, putting myself in these situations to say, hey, I'm here to do the work and I know I can do the work and, you know, if I have to keep reproving it again, that's totally fine because I'm passionate HBCUs about it. HBCUs are top producers of STEM ERS period, but also mm -hmm. STEM PhDs. Yes. And so there's a lot of truth behind how we message, uh, creative messaging for how to deal with So you mentioned this idea of as a uh, scientist, you're walking into the room and you're kind of assessing, even though you are a journalist and you're capturing moments, right, a photographer. It's the same with computing. I think we have that lens to not just understand what the consumer might see as a benefit of the technology, but we're producers, so we're always thinking about the next wave of, of problem we can solve or the next idea we can develop into some actionable technology or some way to better understand how people interact with technology so that we can develop better devices. So all that is what I'm thinking about too as a computer scientist and I think that is a distinction as being a technologist that you have the lens of both the consumer, the person who uses the technology, but also the developer and the producer who is creating this for the masses. So I am a woman and a woman of color and the expectations are often low. And trying to, let's say I, ha I was on an actual large project, very global, um, teams were globally dis di di um, dispersed, but um, they didn't think I could manage it. And so they brought on you know, additional help. That can set someone back. Um, and I was actually a contractor um, uh, at the time, so I was okay with it, and I always have to prove myself. Uh, but in the long run, it actually helped me learn more about the project, learn more about me, how I, uh, you know, just mature and the situations that I am and know how to handle them. But in, in the end of the project, you know, I was praised, I was recognized as a leader, um, moved into a much more higher leadership role and uh, save the company money because they were actually losing money on that particular project. And so, you know, it's all good. Well, my father is an electrical engineer and he started a company in telecommunications um, in Chicago when we were young. So my, and I'm the youngest of three children. We all went to work with him on Saturdays. So we all know how to solder. We know how to build circuit boards. And for me, I was exposed to computers in high school. 
So I migrated away from electrical engineering more toward computer engineering or computer science um, due to the exposure in high school with programming. Unconscious, that's when I hear things like, well, I don't see race, you know, the, the myth of colorblindness as being something that is progressive racial. when it actually contributes to racism mm -hmm. and perpetuates it. So I would say you need to open your support and uh, your networks. You need, to you need to surround yourself with people who you can look up to, who look like you, who've done it already, or who, who are doing it, to get support from them when you're feeling in a, a weak moment. Um, so for me, that actually came from a cousin of mine who was finishing a PhD when I was in, in this stage of, I just, I'm so tired, I don't know if I have the strength to finish this program. Um, but I watched her finish, and then I said, okay, I can do this. Whether you're facing an unfair situation or you perceive it to be unfair, it's not the circumstance that defines you. It's, it is your action that defines you and your success. And so um, that's what, you know, I want, if, if there's anything that I've learned um, throughout my life and throughout um, being a computer scientist uh, since I began as an undergraduate, you know, at Georgia Tech, um, is that. It's what you do uh, that defines who you are and not your circumstance or not what you perceive that people are doing to you. And a lot of my students, when I see them swaying and saying, I think CS is not for me, I try to show them that there's a lot that you can do in computer science that's not just about hardcore coding. And so if you're in another discipline like biology, developing a mobile app to help mothers with prenatal care, uh, that is computer science. Uh, if you're the kind of person who says, well, I want to see what the latest thing is on black Twitter, that is computer science. If you're saying, well, I'm really into art and, and how things look and, and changing uh, the way that we communicate and express ourselves of art, you can do that with technology, but guess what? That's computer science. If you're into making music, you can, there's aspects of making music that require the use of technology, manipulating music, that is computer science. I can't think of any particular aspect of the real world that doesn't somehow or another interface with computer science. Coming from industry and then going into academia, my experiences are varied because, you know, and, and I really hadn't met a lot of people who were able to express some of the same things that I was feeling. And so being at this workshop really, to me, is instrumental because uh, one of the things we talked about was funding and how we can possibly, you know, increase and get a national conference sort of like on the scale of Grace Hopper. And I know that there are several different funding agencies that we probably never even thought about because we weren't going after those pots of money. But now it's really time that, you know, black women collectively work together to, to get that funding. There are no role models and the only way you know, you can see some of them is, you know, through fiction. That's how, that's how I got hooked, like I said. Um, but it wasn't until I got into grad school that I actually found, you know, black women in computing that I could look to and say, wow, I want to be her, you know, in 10 years, 15 years, you know, something tangible that I could actually uh, look to. And um, I met um, Dr. Valerie Taylor, Dr. Tiffany Williams. Um, they were my advocates, my mentors, and they connected me with, you know, this wonderful network of black women, small network, very tight, small network of black women in computing, and it just kind of, you know, grew from there. And um, yeah, that's um, something that we're trying to, an, an issue that we're trying to confront is, you know, putting more women like that in front of young girls that are looking for role models so that they can find them, you know, outside of the sci-fi realm. <laughs> One of the things that I am very interested in helping to push my students to do, though, is to not think about um, a job per se after they leave the gates of Spelman, but to think about how can I leverage my experience now to create opportunities for myself while I'm here at Spelman as a student. Thinking about technology, social entrepreneurship, thinking about starting their own businesses, utilizing the skills that they need to address problems that the world is facing right now that they can solve right now. So not waiting until some, you know, graduation date or some forever future in order to start doing the work that they're called to do, but starting to position themselves to solve pro real problems right now. You can absolutely make the money you want as a computer scientist. But in my mind, it's more than money. 
if you want to create the next wave of technology that has meaning and value in people's lives, then computer science is the way to go. You like solving problems, you like challenging yourself, you like developing the mobility, the technology that again becomes part of what can be, be a, a, a non-detachable part of everyday life, then computer science is for you. They don't need PhDs to do to be a VP. You don't need that. And so um, I think it, we, it strengthens our community to ha it behooves us because we're not usually at that C suite. We're going to all face things in our life and, and, and be challenged just because of who we are. And we have to expect that. I uh, used the analogy, uh, I, I, I spoke recently this, uh, at this great place, and one of the things I, I spoke about is rhythm and music, because I love music. Uh, there's this thing called polyrhythm, and I'm pretty sure you've heard of it. But the whole idea of polyrhythm is the concept that in life you will have a steady pattern. You'll have things that come up in life that you're, you know how to do, and it's just a steady march. That beat is just happening. It's just a steady march, right? Mm -hmm. But the whole idea of music is that you know that you're going to have that opposing beat. Bam! You know, the opposing beat that's right. coming, right? But knowing that, you don't get thrown off. It's just a part of your tapestry. It's just a part of music. So understanding even that basic principle of knowing that you have a steady beat, that things will, you know, go as planned. But expect that opposition. But the opposition is not there to throw you off, off, off your game. It's not there to just take you out the game. The opposition is there. It's just part of it. It's just making music. It's just a part of it. And, and that's how I approach things. I mean, I've, I've faced very, very challenges in industry. People, you know, they, they question your competency. They may never have seen someone that looked like you and definitely may never have heard someone who has a big mouth like yours, you know? But that's a part of you. Um, you be humble, you know, bring your humility and be very respectful of others. Uh, my Southern way, that's just the way I am. Um, but in doing that, just know that some people will oppose you. Some, um, some structures are going to not be in your favor. You're going to get discouraged. Um, that's, that's part of life. Um, unlike me, because I'm one of the first African-American women to earn a PhD in electrical engineering. Um, and so I really did not have people who looked like me who who I could tap into to, for support, uh, but I had family members and friends. You, on the other hand, have a large group of people that you can tap into uh, who can support you. Uh, reach out to them. You are not alone. Reach out to them. They're more than happy to support you. Um, but the important thing I want you to understand is this. If you truly believe this is your purpose and destiny, then it is going to happen for you no matter what anyone may say or think or do. It is going to happen, hang on to that, and then go make it happen.